In this section, we're going to be covering the Swift fundamentals. Now, Swift is the programming language that we use to make apps, and we're going to spend most of this section in the playground. Now, what are we covering? We're going to be covering variables and constants. These are the building blocks of Swift, so we've really got to nail these two things down. Then we're going to be learning about strings and ints, which are two types, and you know you want to learn as many types as you can in Swift, but you've got to start somewhere, so we're going to start with strings and ints. Then we're going to move on to comments and print. This will allow us to kind of add some organization to our code and give us some debugging tools. We'll move from there on to Booleans and if statements. Now, Booleans is another type, just like a string and an int, and if statements will sort of bring our code alive. That'll be a fun section. And then we're actually going to start coding about how you would build a tip calculator. So the final section in this course is where we're going to be building a tip calculator app. We're going to sort of do the mock version of it first here inside of a Swift playground. So in this video, which is going to be on variables and constants, again, these are the basic building blocks of Swift, so we really want to make sure we nail these down. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, it's time to dive in and start learning about Swift. First thing that we got to do is open up Xcode and start a new playground. So I'm going to open up my Xcode here. Go ahead and get yours launched. And once that's ready to go, you'll see this familiar welcome screen again. Now, before we had made an Xcode project, and that's what you do to go make like an iPhone app, Mac app, whatever, but we're just trying to learn Swift, and there's nothing better for this than the playground. The playground's where we can experiment, you know, try a bunch of different things. There's no big consequences. We don't have to run a bunch of stuff to see what happens with code. It's a great place to learn Swift. So we're going to click on Get Started with a Playground. Uh, and you can pick any name that you want for yours. I'm just going to keep what I have here. I'm going to say next. This just makes a single file, and you can choose where to save it. I'm going to put it on my desktop, and there you can see it showed up right there. Okay. Now, with my playground, I have my text really big, so if you want to you know, grow or shrink yours, you can go to Xcode Preferences, and under Font and Colors, you can change what yours is going to look like. You can you know, even do the different colors, whatnot. But let's go ahead and dive into what's happening here. Now I'm going to take mine full screen just so that you'll be able to see more of the code that's happening here. And the playground starts out with some sort of boilerplate code for you here. But we want to go ahead and get rid of all of this. So just select everything, hit delete. We just want a fresh white blank canvas. So what I'm going to introduce to you in this lecture is the concept of variables and constants. These are the building blocks of Swift. Variables and constants, okay? And at their core, they are containers. They are things that hold a piece of information. So let's go ahead and start with variables and we'll move on to constants. So what is a variable? It's something that holds a piece of information. And variables have names. We can name them whatever we want and we use them to, you know, hold a piece of information. So let's walk through, write our first line of code here, and then we'll talk about it. So to create a variable in Swift, you must type var, short for variable, right? That makes sense. And then we give our variable a name. So let's say I want to have a variable that represents my age. I'm going to say var space, then age. That's the name that I've given to this variable. And then I have to set this age equal to something. I have to, you know, put some sort of value into age. So I'm going to say var age, var space age, space is equal to. So with Swift, anytime you type something new, you've got to have a space in between it. So I'm going to say var space age space is equal to, and my age is 28. So I'm going to say that I'm equal to 28. And essentially what we've done is we've taken this number 28 and we've put it inside of this variable age. Now something that's cool with a playground here is that you can have this little menu out on the right. It shows you a little kind of output of what things are as they happen over time. So for example, after I've made this variable called age and I've set it equal to 28, I've put this 28 inside of age. If I come down here on a different line of code and I type age, you'll see outputted here on the right is what age is equal to. It's equal to 28. If I make age 6, for example, you'll see represented down here, now age is equal to 6. Okay. So the cool thing about variables is that they can change over time. So, for example, if I want to say, you know, age is 6, but now I want age to be equal to 7, I can totally do that. Now age will be equal to 7, and I can update it further. I can say, you know what, now age is equal to 8. And just over time, you can run this. Now, remember, Swift code runs top to bottom like this. So, you know, this line of code runs first. It makes this variable called age and sets it equal to 6. Then it's, you know, going to say, okay, age is now equal to 7. Then it's equal to 8. And anytime you see the equal sign in Swift, it's, 
you know, not that the two things are always going to be equal. It's that you're taking the thing on the right side and you're putting it into the thing on the left side. Okay, so that's a good concept to know. And so remember, variables can change over time. They can hold more than just numbers. For example, let's say I want to make a variable that holds my dog's name, for example. So I'm going to say var dog name. Now it's important to remember with variable names that you don't have any spaces in them. So for example, if I'm doing a variable that sort of has two words in it, like dog name, I'm going to say var space and I have dog name all together. And I usually, when I have two words, I like to capitalize the second letter that sort of denotes that there's two words in there, it makes it a little bit easier to read, but nothing special about that. And let's say I want to set this variable dog name equal to something. Uh, let's say my dog's name is Fido. Well, what I'm going to do if I want to represent some text, some words inside of a variable, I have to do two double quotes like this. So I've got my quotation marks here. Then I'm going to put inside of there the name Fido. So now I have a variable called dog name that is equal to Fido. And because it's a variable, I can, you know, update this over time. I can say dog name is equal to and change it to something like Sarah. I've got to have those quotation marks around it, but as long as I've got that, I can change this over time. Now, something else I wanted you to see here is as we were typing, did you notice as I was typing dog name that we had this little, you know, menu pop up here? So Xcode has this awesome autocomplete that if you've created a variable name, it will, you know, detect, hey, they typed the words dog, they probably want dog name. So if I hit tab on this, or uh, by contrast, if I hit enter, it'll sort of autocomplete the rest of of it for me, which is uh, pretty nice. So these are variables. They hold a piece of information like a number or you know some words and they can change over time. Now it's important to note that if you set a variable like age to be equal to a number, you can't turn it into a, a word. So for example, if I want to say age is equal to hello or something like that, Xcode's playground is going to get angry at me and it says, hey, you know, you created this thing as a number. Now you're trying to set it equal to, uh, you know, words, text. That's not okay. So if we, you know, start a variable as a number, it always has to be a number. If we start it as some text, it always has to be text, okay? Now the next thing that I want to teach you about is a constant. So a constant is just like a variable in that it holds a piece of information. But once you set a constant, it can't change over time. So for example, I'm going to make a new constant that's going to be called wallet. Okay, so this is going to hold the amount of money in my wallet. So I'm going to say, to make a new constant, I first have to type the words let. Now this might seem a little bit confusing. You know, why are we saying let is, you know, short for constant? Var is short for variable. Let doesn't seem short for constant. Well, this is kind of an old programming term. The Swift is adopted. Just know let means you want to create a new constant. So I'm going to say let, then I'm going to give my constant a name, in this case wallet, and then I'm going to set it equal to something. So maybe I've got 20 bucks in my wallet. All right. So, you know, here I've got this new constant named wallet. It's equal to 20. Now, if I want to change wallet, like if I want to say, you know what, I bought something at the store, maybe a bag of chips and a drink. Now I've got 15 bucks. If I say wallet is now equal to 15, you're going to see this error in the playground because it's saying, hey, wallet is a constant and you're trying to change it. So in fact, when I hit this little red arrow here, it's trying to help me. It's saying, hey, do you want to change this let to a var? And if I double click this, it'll change it to a variable because it's saying, hey, you were trying to change this. Let me make this a variable. Then you can actually change the piece of information. But at least in our example here, I just wanted to show you let so you can see if you make a constant with let here, uh, it will not change over time. So for example, let's delete wallet for a second. If I change, you know, variable age to be a constant called age, this line of code is okay, but these two lines of code are not because I'm saying, you know, age is six. Now age is going to be equal to six for the rest of this program. For the rest of this code running, age is going to be equal to six. So these, you know, two lines are now not okay. And same thing goes with this dog name. If I change this, you know, to let, so now dog name is a constant you know, this is going to be, we can't update this piece of information. Okay, so I'm going to undo that so you can sort of get back there. But those are the two core pieces of Swift, right? We're going to build on top of these two things. But just remember, variables and constants hold a piece of information, like a number or some text. And variables can change over time. Constants cannot. They both have names, and we can decide whatever we want those names to be. There can't be spaces in the names. But that's about it, okay? So there's your very first concept in Swift.